You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. What is up, everybody? The protesters, the peaceful protesters, they marched through downtown Seattle last night. Arrests were made for peaceful property damage. That's what we're talking about. If you're new here, my name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies, but I read the news that you like to hear and watch. Let's jump on in. All right. So this is first podcast of full day under the new presidential administration. So we are going to have some fun. There's going to be some fun had because eh, let's be honest, there's going to be a lot of material for what I do. And so the peaceful protesters, mm, new administration, mm, that's going to be a tough sell, isn't it? This nonsense that keeps going on. President Joe Biden's, and this is a Seattle Times article. They're always solid local news. I don't care if, they, if they've got a bias. All right. But most of their news is pretty well founded. And it, that's kind of what I look for. President Joe Biden's inauguration was met Wednesday evening in downtown Seattle with protest and scattered property damage from anti-fascist marchers who have demonstrated for months. They're no longer the peaceful protesters, are they? Anti-fascist marchers. They've been demonstrating for months. We need to deal with them. Mm. Are we going to? Probably not. A group which numbered about 100 protesters early in the evening and later dropped in size because people had to go home and do stuff other than destroy buildings. They marched through downtown and called for the abolition of immig immigration and customs enforcement. So now we have thrown on there, defund the police, get everybody out of jail that was protesting. What else do we have? Um, more money to BIPOC communities. And now we've got another one in here. We're changing our call here. We want to abolish immigration and customs enforcement. I know that's been out there. And I've seen a few things on that. But you know, it's a new administration. It's a new day. So the peaceful protesters, they've got a new thing that they're on. Get rid of ice. Uh, ice is no good. No good. Also, I'm hearing Biden is no good. What? How can that possibly be? I mean, we wanted Trump out of there. I mean, the peaceful protesters did. F Trump. Can't tell you how many times I heard that. It was, it's like, uh, can, can you guys get like a new chant? Can you, can you do anything new? No, you can't. In chants, they decried both former President Donald Trump and Biden. These guys just don't want really anything. What do you want? You want your point proven by destroying property owned by other people you don't want the police, but we know that we need police to protect people from like you from us. How is this going to work out? Not well. Police made at least three arrests at, as of 9pm last night for property damage, burglary and an assault. Yet they are the peaceful protest. Oh, am I hearing out there since the new administration is in in uh, office? These aren't peaceful protesters. This isn't a peaceful protest. Whew. The narrative is changing, isn't it? I think so. And I'm making total fun. Let's be honest. But that's kind of what the other side of media did this entire last four years, right? Just making stuff up and running with it. Outside of the ICE offices on 2nd Avenue and Spring Street, and this is not a good area, several in the crowd lit fire to an American flag. I am a no-go on doing anything but holding the American flag up the way that it's supposed to be. It doesn't touch the ground. You don't wear it as clothing and you don't set it on fire. Those are kind of some of my, I know I have a wide range of what's acceptable, but with the American flag, I don't know. You just don't mess with that, right? I mean, it, that's just, it's not that it's unpatriotic, which it is. It's just really disrespectful. And people that light a flag on fire, I'm a no-go. I'm not going to be your Facebook friend. Let's put it that way. Some spray painted and smashed three windows at a building that houses an Amazon Go store. Amazon uses $2 fun tech for ice. Let's read that one again. Amazon, uh, they smashed three windows at a building that houses an Amazon Go store. I get that. They don't like big corporate, but they don't like anything. But they hammer on big corporate because they're like, oh, those guys can pay. Amazon uses $2 fund tech. I don't know what that means. Somebody will tell me. In the comments, let me know what that means. Amazon uses $2 tech fund for ice, red one tag. 
But I mean, a lot of these tags, you read them and you go, what? This makes no sense. And the spelling's usually goofy. And you know, they're in a hurry to tag whatever it is they're tagging, because somebody might come along because what they're doing is illegal. And so the spelling is half the time wrong. It doesn't make any sense. And you look at it and you go, man, my kid in like elementary school could have done a way better job. Glad they didn't, but they could have. The group is on, and here's a uh, tweet from Heidi Groover. Um, the group is on the move again. Meanwhile, inside the Jackson Federal Building, there, yeah, yeah, you got some protesters in there. Not good. Police issue a three-minute dispersal after damage to Pike Place, a Starbucks, and one arrest. And that was also from Heidi Groover, a uh, tweet. And um, yeah, the original, uh, the Pike Place Starbucks is the very first Starbucks around and it is, as you're looking at that infamous, or not infamous, but famous, so used to saying infamous, but this one's just straight on famous, the Pike Place Market sign and the area where the guy throws the fish, it is off to the right and on the other side of the street. It's kind of a cobblestone alleyway. It's right there, right by Pike Place Market. And they like to hammer on that Starbucks because it's historic. it has historic value. And why not just trash all? all things that have any kind of value to anybody. That is kind of the, um, that's the way of these people, peaceful protesters. That's what they do. Eh, just hammer on stuff. As the group gathered at Occidental Square, one protester, protester said watching Biden call for unity during his inauguration felt like an insult to those harmed by racism, xenophobia, and homophobia. Uh... Okay, calling for unity with people who actively want to harm people is disgusting, said the protester who gave the name Anna. Anna, what are you talking about? I don't really follow what you're saying. That makes no sense to me. But then again, I am not out protesting and destroying other people's properties in the hopes that people see my actions and realize, oh, I am on board with that cause because I'm not. The, the Biden administration can't be counted on to meaningfully change immigration policy without public pressure, said one protester, who gave the initial D, but declined to give a full name, citing fears of doxing. That just, that, yeah, uh, what are we talking about here? Crazy. You guys know, you guys all know what doxing is. It's when you, um, like, I can dox people. If I put up, if somebody annoyed me, I could put up all of their information here on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast and have you guys reach out to them and give them loving, caring messages. We could do that, but we're not going to because that's doxing and I'm not really about that, right? That, that's that's kind of like, I, I know a lot of YouTubers do that. A lot of podcasters, um, you know, they feel like, like that is something, a benefit that comes their way. Um, as part of having an audience. And you can do that, but uh, no, I'm not okay with that. I don't think immigration should be enforced violently, the protester said, suggesting social workers and other address immigration instead of law enforcement. All right, but without law enforcement, none of this stuff has any meaning. If there are no consequences to actions, it's anarchy and that's kind of what's happening in Seattle right now. And everybody's looking in going, oh, what a what a crazy show Seattle's got going on. Let's see a little bit more. Let's tune into the Seattle Real Estate Podcast and see what the real estate man has to say, what's going on in Seattle. That's exactly what people are doing from all over the world. Thank you for being here. As long as these storylines keep going, I'm going to keep on talking. I will abuse the microphone. <laughs> on Thursday morning, several business leaders denounced the property damage. Yeah. Last night's violence and destruction in downtown has no place in our city or democracy. And it never did, even when it was considered peaceful protesting. And that was a statement signed by Pike Place Market Preservation and Development Authority Executive Director Mary Baccarella. Seattle Metropolitan Chamber President Rachel Smith, Visit Seattle President Tom Norwalk, and Downtown Seattle Association President John Scholes. Every Seattle elected official should immediately denounce these extremists. But they won't. And you know why? Because they let them run amok since last spring, late last spring. And to do something now, I mean, Mayor Ted Wheeler down in Portland, he's, he's denouncing their actions and he's 
reimagining and he's rethinking a strategy of how to deal with them. But because he was down there taking fo selfie photos with them at one point, it's kind of this spin that's going to be hard to do. And our local politicians here in Seattle, the summer of love, it went sideways on us. And now we got to deal with these people in black doing their thing. How are we going to get rid of them? What are we going to do? Don't know. It's going to be really interesting to see how this goes because you can't let these people keep doing what they're doing. And now you've got three pretty big associations that are like, hey, you need to pay attention to what's going on because these broken windows, this is not a good thing. And it's not just broken windows. It's the whole epidemic of violence and property destruction for what? For the sake of violence and property destruction, not your not your constitutional right to free speech. After the vandalism of the Amazon Go store, police arrived and trailed the group in vehicles on bikes and on foot, eventually issuing a dispersal order. After a scuffle between a member of the crowd and another person, police tackled and arrested the black clad protester. We're not going to say member of Antifa. No, because they're a myth, right? I mean, if black if this isn't a Black Lives Matter, who is it? Who's who's out there doing the protesting? I don't know. It's a black clad protester. I think I always find that interesting when when media does that. It's like, okay, we're going to say who it is, but we're not really going to say it is. But we're going to tell them what cl color clothes they wear. Windows were also shattered at the federal William Kenzo Nakamura courthouse on Fifth Avenue, police said. I mean, they're, ju they're just basically going after buildings that are either big corporate or they have to do with the law. And saw that time and time and time again down in Portland, right? I mean, that's just what they do. Ah, oh, government, let's break their windows. I mean, all right, that's not, <laughs> what can you say, right? Inside the Henry M. Jackson Federal Building on 2nd Avenue, about 10 officers stood guard in tactical gear with ICE and Department of Homeland Security badges. Some wore gas masks. Later, about 40 of the protesters wound through downtown Pike Place Market and South Lake Union along the way, smashing windows at the Pike Place uh, Starbucks. Police rushed into the market and made at least one arrest. How long are we going to let this go on? That is my question. When does this end? Got to put an end to it. Mayor of Seattle, you got to do something. And we will hear from her. And it'll be similar to what Mayor Ted says, which is we are reimagining, we are rethinking, and I'm making this up, of course. I'm paraphrasing. We have to come up with, I've, I've got to meet with leaders from the police and leaders from the city and, you know, council members. We've got to come up with a strategy because these people are not peaceful. They are, this is not a good look anymore. And it hasn't been a good look all the way around, along. You've got small business that, that are shuttered, that are being battered, and city leadership is doing what? What is that that I hear they're doing? Nothing. They are turning a blind eye to this. You don't hear anybody coming out and doing a press conference. Hey, you got to stop that nonsense. People in black, stop that nonsense. Otherwise, we're going to throw you in jail for a long time. But we're not doing that in Seattle. They basically just don't even prosecute them. In South Lake Union, a line of officers on bikes rode single file guarding the Amazon spheres and an Amazon Go store. As protesters chanted, we protect people, you protect property. <laughs> How are they protecting people by smashing out windows? How is that protecting people? I don't think it is. And some of living in society is that you don't destroy others property. And if you do, there are consequences to your actions. That's the normal drill in a normal city, but not in Seattle, because if police arrest these guys, guess what? We want all protesters out of jail for free. That's kind of how we're handling it. Oh, you did some protesting. And it was mostly peaceful, except for that at that thing at the end where you broke all those windows. Do better next time. Here you go. boy. Get out there, Tiger. You go do. You, you, you spread your message. Police said the three arrests were of a 22-year-old man suspected of property damage at the courthouse, a 29-year-old woman accused of assaulting a person and kicking an officer, 
and a 33-year-old man suspected of property damage and burglary at the Starbucks. So this stuff goes on all day, every day, just about. I mean, if you look at throughout the United States, look at what's going on. You can find a report just about anywhere of in some city where this kind of stuff is going on because this is not this isn't just a pop up from last spring or last summer. This is an ongoing thing. And um, until there's some opposition to what they're doing, you know, some consequences for their actions, guess what, nothing's going to happen. So you've got this stuff going on on a small scale. What you had at the nation's capital, yeah, that was big scale. And everybody was like, oh, the violence. Oh, this is ho- a federal building. Oh, they desecrated a federal building. Well, you know, that was the far right. That's, that's, and that was Trump supporters doing that, basically the far right. And we don't like the far right as far as the national media and just about everybody else goes. So we're going to put that under a microscope and we're going to arrest a lot of people. I think a couple more Seattle police officers came out and said, yep, I was there because they I'm, I'm sure they were given legal counsel. Hey, if you were there, identify yourself and let's hope you weren't doing anything crazy like breaching the security area because – You know, Adrian Diaz, interim chief Adrian Diaz of the Seattle Police Department has said, if you did anything basically out of bounds, you're not going to be a police officer here. And I think that is a fair call because you can't have cops upholding the law here, not upholding the law and doing things on their own over here. That's not a good look and that's not where you want to be. So hopefully these police had enough sense to know, okay, my job depends on this. So I am not going to breach the security grounds of the Capitol. I'm going to stay within the bounds of what is legal. And, um, you know, that's the way a lot of the people who were at the Capitol, that's the way they were. They didn't go inside. It's the ones who went inside, took photos, took selfies, posted a bunch of videos. Those are the ones that are, you know, their rear end's just going to be stuck to a pole and people are going to go, oh, look at you. We're going to prosecute you. And that is happening. And you know what? I'm not down with what happened there. I'm not okay with how that ended up. I don't think that was a point um, that was well executed. It just, the whole thing went sideways. If you want to protest outside, and I've said this how many times, I don't know. I get bored and tired of talking about it. But if you're going to protest, that's fine. Keep it legal. That's your right. Anything else? I'm a no-go. I'm a no-go. Because it just kind of shows to everybody else, all right, That's if this is what you are saying is your protest call and it's kind of illegal, mm, I'm probably not going to affiliate with you. And you might say, hey, yeah, but what about stop the steal? Okay. Yep, you can say that, but it still doesn't make trespassing on the nation's capital okay. A lot of people want to say, hey, but those are federal grounds, and we we basically own the government, right? We the people. Yeah, you still got to have rules. You still got to live by rules. We live in a society. Jim Jeffries. If you don't watch Jim Jeffries, mm, I can understand why you wouldn't inf- enjoy Jim Jeffries, but he's an Australian comedian, and I think he's very funny. A little caustic at times, but um, very funny. And he has some very interesting, different perspective coming from Australia. Um, and it's it's entertaining at, 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 uh, at the very least. But he would say, well, you live in a society, you got to follow the rules. I That's just kind of where I'm at. If you were one of those people who are like, yeah, rush, bum rush the, the capital. All right. Eh, no, <laughs> that's, that, that, that's just kind of where I'm at. That's the hard line I hold. Um, but yeah, if, if this is an indication, if, if the tomfoolery we've got going on here by the peaceful protesters breaking windows, is if this is an indication of what's to come in the Biden administration, whew. We're going to have a lot to talk about on the Seattle Real Estate Podcast, right? I think we are. So thank you for being here. I'm going to end this one. Love to have you subscribe if you so see fit. If not, I'll see you on the next one anyway. Thanks again for being here. We'll catch up soon. Bye for now. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you'll know when our next video is out.